large city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Sunday is the one day of the week a man can get up at noon and sit around with his boots off without anybody hollering at him about it. So, of course, this Sunday, Chester and I were in the saddle at dawn and on a wild goose chase upriver. It was on the way back that we chanced into a cottonwood grove about five miles from town. There, two raggedy young men with rifles stood behind a lean, long-bearded old patriarch with pale, jumpy eyes. He held a heavy leather strap in his hand and was rhythmically laying it onto the bloody naked back of a young cowboy that strung up by the wrist. Well, that rotten old devil. All right, hold it there. Stand where you are, mister. These boys of mine will shoot your eyes out. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Now you cut that man down. Help him, Marshal. He's killing me. I'll cut him down, Mr. Dillon. You keep your hands off him, you... Go ahead, Chester. And don't anybody try to stop him. Chester, is it? Well, Chester, you touch that sinner hanging there, and I'll bring you to judgment just as I have him. Never mind him, Chester. Go ahead. Yes, sir. And if you men want to shoot it out, let's get started right now. Oh, hold your fire, boys. It ain't the marshal's hand that's interfering. It's Chester's. And it's Chester I'll bring to judgment for it. I gave the order, mister. But he's carrying it out. And he's the one who pay. There you are, fella. Thank you. I couldn't have took much more. Here's your shirt. All right, you. I take it these are your sons. What's your name? My name is Ira Skirlock. And my boys are Dale and Hard. We got nothing to hide. Come on over by the marshal. Give me a gun, marshal. All I ask is a gun. I'll kill every one of them. Just take it easy now. Chester, get your canteen. He needs some water. Yes, sir. Now, what happened here, anyway? Who are you? Jim Bright. I was just riding into Dodge, and they stopped me. Oh, what for? Because they're crazy. That's what's for. All of them crazy as loons. Watch your tongue, you. Shut up, Dal. I'll tell you why we stopped him, Marshal. Today's Sunday. Sabbath. So? On the Lord's day, who did Arch to sin to waste his substance with riotous living? Listen to him. I told you he was crazy. Here you are. Uh, here. Drink some of this water. <laughs> Thank you. Now, what happened? They come at me with them rifles, and they drive me off my horse. And then they held trial. Now, I ain't lying. They held trial. That old devil, Skurlock, was the judge. And them boys of his was like jurors. They even took a vote. It was crazy. Uh, out of thine own mouth, I judged thee. You see what I mean, Marshal? All right, Bride, get your horse. We'll see you in the dodge. Okay, Marshal. I can make it. Skurlock, what are you, a preacher of some kind? I'm a man who's been through fire and through water. A man who has renounced the devil and all his works. Paul oh, ain't a preacher. He don't like sinning, that's all. He's powerful strong again. it. Well, so am I. And I say it's a sin to take an innocent man and whip him. I tried to save him, Marshal. He needed a hard lift. Skerlock, I'd throw you in jail if I thought it would do any good, but I do promise you this. If I hear any more of your saving sinners, you're going to rot in jail anyway. That goes for the three of you. You got no right to talk like that. No right at all. No right. 
He's a U.S. Marshal, and it's his job to keep the peace, ain't it? A scarecrow with a garden of cucumbers keepeth nothing. Why, well, you crazy old fool. Take it easy, Chester. You, Chester, you've interfered with the work of the Lord. It was your hand, and you shall be judged. I promise it. He means it, too. Paul's going to fetch you up for fire, Chester. And by all they ain't fooling, Mr. Dillon. Skylark, I told you before I gave the order to cut that man down. And any time you want satisfaction for it, you call on me. Chester was warned he shall be judged. Uh, we're wasting our time. Come on, Chester. Yeah, but, but he means it, Mr. Dillon. Look at them eyes. They're as wild as a bear in spring. Forget it. Bride's waiting for us over there. Come on, let's go. I lie not. You shall be judged, Chester. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Well, she's plumb out of his mind. He's fit to cast a spell. Never mind him, Chester. Well, that's all right for you to say, Mr. Young, but it's me he's mad at. Uh, you think you can make it, Bright? Yes, sir. Right, let's mount up. Okay? Yeah. Then let's go. right, Kitty. Chester's still shaking on his boots. I can't say I blame him. That old man sounds like a lunatic. I think maybe he is. Um, how's the cowboy they beat up? Oh, he's all right. Doc fixed him up fine. Oh, I still think you should have arrested the old man. Yeah, he's too drunk on his own juice for any cure I know, Kitty. Maybe you're right. What are you looking at? At the bar there. Huh? Standing alone. Oh, that ragged hillbilly with the rifle? I don't know. You know who that is? That's Dal, Kitty, one of old Skirlock's sons. Oh, taking a drink. Well, wait till the old man hears about this. He has. Huh? That's him coming in the door there. Uh-oh. This will be fun. I'm not so sure, Kitty. I think I'll kind of wander over there. Yeah, maybe you'd better. Oh! Son of mine, like a common sinner, drinking hard liquor in a palace of sin. Now, boy, it ain't like that. I just thought I'd try a little old taste of it. Taste of it? Oh, boy. Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Boy, it ain't that bad. I'm a grown man now. A man? You're a pig. I have a pig for a son, and I'll treat him like a pig. You come with me. Where are we going, Paul? The way of transgressors is hard. And I'm going to teach you just how hard. Now walk. Oh, now, Paul, I'm trying to tell you. This. Marshal. Marshal, he'll kill me. I know he will. You got to stop him. Walk, boy. Walk ahead of me. Okay, Paul. Now. You set that rifle down there, boy. Sure. Now, step out here, Dale. Step out here into the street. Now, you're going to get it, boy. Uh, Pa, I didn't mean nothing. I never took a drink before in my life. You got no right to kill me for that. He that spares the rod hateth his son. Step over here, Dale. Sherlock's weaning his son, Chester. Weaning him? You're going to ruin that boy. You don't stop that. Look, he's jobbing him in the belly with his boot, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I guess it's time I stopped it. No, please. That's enough, Sherlock. You kill your boy. You keep on like that. Stop it, I said. Ah, I won't kill him. 
A living dog is better than a dead lion. Fine thing. Call your own son a dog. Chester, you and I have made a covenant with death. What? And with hell we are at agreement. Well, what in the world are you talking about? Your hand interfered with the work of the Lord last Sunday. You shall be judged. And by me. Hey, here now, you... Mr. Dillon, he means all that. Get some water and throw it on Dal there, Chester. Okay, with that old Skurlock gives me the creeps with his talk. He means to do me harm, doggone it. You didn't loosen your tongue much tonight. Man's got to do his thinking sometime, Doc. Thinking? About what? Women or money, Chester? What? All this thinking that you've got to do now, which is it about? Women or money? Oh, you won't never understand nothing, Doc. Nothing at all. Now, well, now, wait a minute. You're wrong about that. There's one thing I always understand. What's that? When it's bedtime. My God, oh, you're right. I think I'll turn in, too, Doc. Yeah, and quit worrying, Chester. Never does a man a bit of good to worry. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're right. Anyway, thank you for the beer. Thank you. Did I pay for the beer? Oh, 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 yes, Chester. Very well, good night, Chester. Good night, Doc. Up a minute, Chester. What? There's two rifles in your back, so don't get skittish. Oh, look here, we had Irish Skrillock's boys. That's right, Chester. Oh, well, what are you doing here? I mean, what do you want of me? Paul's out in camp, waiting. For me? Right down the alley, there, Chester. We brought an extra horse for you. Oh, I ain't no by going. I ain't going now. I'll push a hole in you with this rifle. Easy, huh? You don't have to ruin him. Dell, why are you doing this? Didn't your pa just about beat the daylights out of you this afternoon? Yeah, and he'll kill him next time, and Dell knows it, too. Now, you get moving, Chester. It's going to be a long enough night as it is. It ain't come on, I ain't going. Hit it, Dell. No. Well, then I will. You didn't have to kill him. I just tapped him. But you wait till I tell Pa about you, Dell. You do. I'll put a bullet in your mouth, Hart. I swear I will. We'll see about that later. Right now. Let's drag him down this alley before somebody comes by. And listen, you better help, too, Dal. Mm, well, all right. message now to those men and women who are living in the United States but are not citizens of this country. In this month of January, all aliens are required to report their addresses to the government. Cards on which to report the required information may be obtained at any post office or from an office of the Immigration and Naturalization Service. When the cards are filled out, return them to the clerk from whom they were received. Failure to register at this time can result in serious legal penalties. If you are an alien and have not already registered for this year, make sure you go soon to your local post office or immigration service office for the card. If you are ill or disabled, you may arrange to have a friend or relative pick up and return your card for you. But you must register. 
Why not stop by at your nearest post office for your card today? Then fill it out and return it without delay. The sinner will rise. You heard him. Get on your feet, Chester. Doggone you. You you bust my head in with your rifle. You bring me way out here in the middle of the night, tie me up like a hog on market day, and you want me to stand up to listen to all this crazy talk. Shut up and get on your feet. (laughs) I'll get you good for this someday, hog. Silence! Chester, you've heard the evidence. You interfered with the work of the Lord. It was your hand that allowed the sinner to escape his punishment. So you shall be punished in his stead. They who have sown the wind shall reap the whirlwind. Trial's over. I shall now pronounce judgment. Now, just a doggone minute, Skrillock. I never heard nothing so loony. What right have you got anyway to think you can bring a man out here and fry him for anything? Especially anything as wild crazy as this. Just now, I'm going to have to fetch you another crack on the head. You don't shut up. After judgment is pronounced, we'll take a vote. A vote? What are you voting for? Rain? I warns you. Well, Odd, lift the sinner to his feet. Get his arm down. I got him. I can't hardly see nothing. Chester, with your right hand, you interfered in the Lord's work. Therefore, I pronounce that your right hand you shall lose. What? Paul, you don't aim to cut his hand off. Silence. You're going to get Paul real down on you, Dal. We'll now take a vote. Wait. What's this about cutting my hand off? That's your punishment. You ain't serious. He's serious, all right. Oh, don't run trials ordinary like Chester. We vote after he's already fixed what the punishment is. But it don't matter none in the long run. You'll see. Why, you're crazy. All of you, you're plumb crazy. Get him on the head again if you have to, Hard. Oh, no. No, I... I want to hear this. Well, then, shut up. Hard. How do you vote? Guilty, Pa. One vote guilty. Dal? Dal, I want your vote. It's too mean, Pa. It's just too doggone mean. Dal, you gone loco. Dal. Now, Pa... Well, I found you drinking hard liquor in a saloon today. My own son standing among men whose God is their bellies feeding like a common sinner on the pumps and vanities of this wicked world. Now, Paul, we don't have that out. Tonight you turn against me like a viper. There's something gone rotten in you, boy. You are fallen from grace. No, Paul. Good for you, Paul. That fixed him. He had it coming. If a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Guard the prisoner hard. Sentence will be carried out at dawn. Chester, dawn's finally coming. You sound mighty happy about it, Hart. Well, I'd sure like to get this business over with so as I can get some sleep. Well, now, I sure do apologize for putting you out so much. Oh, it don't matter. I go without sleep lots of nights. Uh, That's Paul. Hart, listen to me. 
Your pa is crazy. There's no use even trying to talk to him. But you go through with this. The law will get you, and you'll go to prison. Now, you got sense enough to know that. I'll shove a piece of blanket in your mouth so you don't quit talking, Chester. Oh, why don't you answer me? I was fixing to. What's the axe for, Pa? Is thy right hand offend thee? Axe? You ain't really going to chop my hand off, are you? I come as terrible as an army with banners. If you can't do it, this just don't make sense. Keep quiet, Chester. Odd. Oh, no. Where's Dal? I don't know, Pa. He's not here with you? No. He come to a while after you whopped him. Got up and wandered off somewhere. I ain't seen him since. Well, it's over two hours ago. Well, we don't need him, Pa. I got Chester so tied up, one man can hold him easy. Then free his right arm. Lay it on that log. Okay. There. Don't you try nothing now, Chester. Men like you ought to be took out and grounded. Be brave, Chester. The book says every man shall bear his own burden. You talk like a blind parrot, Sherlock. All right. Over here, Chester. You stretch your arm across this log here. Let me go. Quit squirming. Hold him hard. I want to take that hand off with one blow. You take my head off first, you lunatic. Grab it. I've got it. something to tie your brother's arm up with before he bleeds to death. Yeah. I'll use a piece of my shirt. You hold still while I tie that arm up. Huh? Hurry, hurry, doll. Here's a knife, Chester. You got one arm free. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. And it's pure luck I still got this arm. Yeah. I'm sure if you hadn't shot him when you did, I wouldn't even have no head. I didn't shoot him, Chester. What? Dal beat me to it. Well, I am plumb grateful to him. I sure am. But how'd you get out here anyhow? Dal rode into Dodge and found me. Well, glory be. I got the bleeding stuff, Marshal. Good. You stay here with him. We'll send a wagon, Dal. You just hold it up like that, Rod. Marshal? Yeah, what? Well, you said to stay here with him. You yeah. trust me to stay here alone? You got nothing against Hard, have you? No, it ain't that. Well, what then? Ain't you feared I might run off? Run off? Why should you? Paul. I killed Paul, didn't I? Oh, my goodness, you saved my life doing it, Dal. Poor old Paul. I guess he wasn't real bright. He meant to do right, but just got sort of lost somewhere. You know, Dal, your Pa was always quoting the Bible. But here's something he never understood. What does the Lord require of thee but to do justly? and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. <laughs> 